I made all of these images for free in just seconds using the power of Leonardo AI. Now, artificial intelligence is here to stay. It's a huge mainstay in the print-on-demand world or if you're making digital downloads. And so in this video, I'm going to walk through how Leonardo AI works. This is a video for beginners. It's a complete tutorial. If you're a beginner and you're intimidated by AI, this is the video for you. Let's jump in. Okay, the website is called leonardo.ai. It looks just like this. You're gonna go up here to the top right and you're gonna click on the launch app button. Now you need to set up a free account and when you set up a free account and you log in for the first time, you're gonna see a screen that looks like this. There's gonna be a whole lot of pictures in the middle. There's gonna be menus along the top. There's gonna be menus along the left-hand side. It can be a little bit overwhelming if this is your first time here. So let's break this down. First and foremost, I've got my user account here on the top left, and it shows me the amount of credits that I have in my account. I'm using a completely free account. I get 150 credits a day. They call them tokens. And in 41 minutes here, it says it's gonna reset, and I'm gonna get another 150 tokens. So you get a free number of tokens every day that you can use to create images. Now, the way Leonardo AI works is you take text, so you punch in some text into a text prompt, and then you're gonna add an element, and we're gonna get into that in just a minute, what an element is, but it's like a filter, it's a way to give the machine some guidance on what to create, and then there's also a style as well, and we're gonna get into what a style is. So it's text, element, and style. Those three things are gonna make you create great looking images. Okay, so let's create an image here. It's pretty easy to do. Over on the top right-hand side, I'm gonna to go to create, new image. I could also go here, image generation. I could also go here, image generation. Either one of these two, it's the exact same, or you can just go here top right, create a new image. That's what I'm gonna click on. And now from here, I get a generation history of the, all the different elements that I've made. So I can scroll down and I can see there's different elements. And then on the left-hand side, I'm gonna see a menu. So at the top, I'm gonna to type in a prompt. Now I'm gonna, Type in something very simple here. I'm gonna type in the word dog. Pretty simple, right? And now I could just simply click generate. It's gonna cost me 10 tokens. I could do that, not a problem. But there's also other things over here on the left-hand side. So I'd encourage you to take a look at what these are. First of all, there's the preset. So I'm gonna click on preset and we can see there's different platform presets. I've got it right now set to Leonardo Lighting, but I could change it to something else. Graphic design, concept art, portrait, lifelike, and so on. I'm gonna leave it at Leonardo Lighting. Now I've got the style. The style is dynamic, fashion, food, moody. There's all these different styles. So there's way too many to get into here in a video, but you could certainly pick one and you could see if it works and you can sort of test by doing the same prompt with a different style or the same prompt with a different preset and see what the differences are. There's also generation mode here. You can do one that's faster if you're in a hurry or quality if you care about more quality. There's also the image dimensions. This is the size of the image. So you could have 16 by nine, for example, or just a square image. There's also more options here. I'm gonna to go to a four by three image. And then the number of images, you can have five, six, seven, eight. You'll notice that when I change the number of images, the number of tokens it takes to generate an image changes as well. So if I do one image, it's 10. If I do four images, it's not 40, it's only 24. So you actually get like a better value by doing more images. Eight is only 44 instead of 48. So it goes down per image. I'm just gonna leave it at one for now. Now I would encourage you also to go into the advanced settings here on the left-hand side and click down. And you can see there's a different model that's being used. So when I click on model, I can see there's all these different models that come up. And these are like the engines that run Leonardo. So you could have Diffusion XL, Anime XL, and as you click on them, they can change sometimes the number of tokens that you're using. So for example, SDXL1, for example, if I use that, it changes one image now to 16 tokens instead of before I was using Leonardo Lighting. And you'll see now it goes back to 10. So that's sort of the engine that drives it. There's also a photo real function and it gives you more photorealistic output. So if you're doing graphic arts, you may not want it to look like a photograph. You can also do a negative prompt. And if you click on a negative prompt, you can type in what you don't want it to pop up as. So if you want something that continually comes up, you can negate it by typing into the negative prompt. Okay, so here I'm gonna click dog and I'm gonna see what happens here. 
Okay, and we can see right there it's a dog. Now, it may not be the dog you were expecting to see because we didn't put in very much in the way of text. So what I'd recommend you do is you start off simple just to see what the actual platform is giving you. So this is a dynamic style with a medium contrast on a Leonardo Lighting XL model. If we change radically, let's say we do Albedo Base XL, and instead of style being dynamic, let's say I do moody, and the contrast, let's say I do low, same text, dog, now I'm gonna click generate, and we can see we get a radically different dog. When I click on it, you'll see it's a completely different looking animal, it's in a moody forest with fog, it's done a beautiful render, but again, we haven't given it very much information here now in terms of the text. So I could change this, for example, I could say a white dog in a busy city, and now I'll click generate. And we can see just like that, we've got now a white dog as advertised in a busy city. So you really need to play around with three things. One is the model that you're gonna be using. So that's found in advanced settings. So you'd pick whatever model you wanna use. That's like the engine. And then you would pick the style. And that's kind of like a filter. And then you would also use your text prompt here at the top as well. There's also this preset as well. The preset is kind of like a filter. So there's many different ways that you can create similar things. Here I've got anime instead, style as anime general. My contrast, I'm just gonna put back the medium. I'm using the anime XL model that's been default. So the preset will override a lot of these. And then I can say white dog in a busy city. When I click generate, we can see here's an anime style cartoon dog now in a cartoon world. Look at the detail of the render, especially on the ground with the lighting. It's really impressive. So you can have a ton of fun typing in text prompts. Now I wanna spend just a couple seconds here on the text prompts themselves. I've used a very simple prompt and then I've added in a couple more lines. Now if you're not sure what to type into the text prompt, what you can do is right over here on the right hand side, there's these three little stars. If I click those stars, it's gonna give me a random prompt, new random prompt. You can see how detailed the description is. So I'm gonna just click this just to show you what this will look like. This is a blob creature, and we can see here is a big cartoon blob that comes up. Very, very detailed drawing. It's even got a face on it. And I wanted to mention as well, if you click on the top left, just the Leonardo AI button, it's gonna take you back to this main page. And what you can do is you can hover over different already existing images. So for example, I'm gonna go here to this burning house, I'm gonna click on it, and I can see here's the prompt details. Now I can click on this little button and I can copy the prompt. So if I really like this one, I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I wanna do. I can see the machine that's being used, the model, and I can see a lot of the different details that's being used to create this design. So I can just simply click this now and it copies this now to my clipboard. I'll close out, I'll go back to the top, I'll click create new image, and now what I can do is in the text window, if I were to paste that, control V pastes it, I can see now I've got a very similar prompt that I could use. I do wanna show you this other piece right here. It's sort of hidden. It's this little photograph button with a plus on it. And when I click on it, you're going to see image guidance and also elements down below. I'm gonna talk about the elements down below. I'm gonna click view more and I can see these are elements. This is also like a filter, and I really like this. For example, you could create coloring book images by clicking on the coloring book one, or you could create cute emojis or color pop. Old school comic is a great idea. I'm gonna click confirm, and I'm gonna type in ninja with a sword, and I'll click generate image. So you can really have some fun creating different styles of drawings, you've got so many different pivot points here. You've got the text, the elements, the presets, the contrast, and then you've got advanced settings down here, which will also give you the actual model. And there's even a photo reel option as well. You can also change the strength of the element by simply clicking on the element. And you can see here now the strength, you can move it all the way up to two or all the way down to negative two. The stronger the strength, the more pronounced the style will be. You can also just simply delete out the element by clicking the little trash can button. That will remove the element. So you can start off with your preset, type in your text, add in an element if you like, and then click generate.
So I actually ran this twice. The one down below, the strength was not very strong. It was in the middle. And this one here, the strength was already at the maximum. I punched it all the way up. So it gave me a coloring book page that's almost all black and white. You can have a ton of fun monkeying around with all the different options here inside of Leonardo. I'd suggest you start off simple, simple text, simple preset, see what comes up, have some fun with it, and then over time get more complex and really test out with the same text, different styles, or the same styles, different text, and see what comes up. Have some fun. The best part is Leonardo's free. You get 150 free tokens or credits every single day. You can see here I have 58 credits left and it resets in 26 minutes. I'll be back to my 150 again. I really hope you found this video helpful. There's a ton of artwork here and have some fun because creating should be fun. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your graphic design journey and have some fun doing it.